Item number SCP-5545 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Provisional Site 344-1 has been built around SCP-5545-1. At least 18 individuals must be present within Site 344-1 at all times. Conceptual Site 344-2 contains SCP-5545-2 via association lock. All Foundation personnel entering Provisional Site 344-1 must be presented with the following phrase. SCP-5545-2 is contained in Site 344-2. SCP-5545-3 will remain inactive as long as SCP-5545-1 and SCP-5545-2 remain contained. Description SCP-5545 refers to a series of interrelated anomalous objects and phenomena. SCP-5545-1 appears as a series of hallways manifesting within the subterranean complex of Provisional Site 344-1. SCP-5545-1 instances appear in various forms, but will always lack doors or discernible markings, possess light fixtures at regular intervals, and be indistinguishable architecturally from its surroundings. Although SCP-5545-1 instances extend indefinitely, these hallways cannot be entered from any other location. It is believed that SCP-5545-1 intersects an interdimensional space. SCP-5545-2 is an entity located within Site-344-2. No further information can be provided. SCP-5545-3 is a phenomenon resulting in SCP-5545-2's interactions with SCP-5545-1. During this process, SCP-5545-1's area of effect will exponentially increase with time, resulting in the manifestation of SCP-5545-1 occurring globally within a period of four to six hours. This will continue so as long as SCP-5545-2 is present within SCP-5545-1. Subversively, SCP-5545-1 will logarithmically decrease in its area of effect while SCP-5545-2 is not present within it. Although this is not the limit to the relationship between SCP-5545-2 and SCP-5545-1, further information would constitute a containment breach. Discovery. Although the exact details behind SCP-5545's discovery are unclear, its central anomaly was believed to have been repeatedly discovered by colonial explorers since the late 1700s. Due to their interactions with SCP-5545-1 and-2, and in some cases the indirect activation of SCP-5545-3, a vast majority of colonial explorers who learned of the anomaly died, either from the anomaly itself or suicidal tendencies provoked by it. The total number of casualties during this time period are believed to number around 70. On September 8, 2003, Foundation researchers discovered SCP-5545 during an expedition to Antarctica. The anomaly was initially believed to be confined to SCP-5545-1 and a provisional site was quickly established. However, after discovering the site in which SCP-5545-2 was located, 16 members of the research team died. After investigation, the current containment procedures were set in place. Notice, the remainder of this file has been deemed extremely sensitive information. If your O5 clearance credentials are found to have been falsified, you will face termination charges. Between December 3, 2003 and November 15, 2019, 29 Mobile Task Force units have been sent into SCP-5545-1 instances, and 73 D-Class personnel. None have been accounted for since. Another expedition was scheduled for December 21, 2019, 
but was prevented from occurring. On November 18, 2019, Director Jason Monroe submitted a formal inquiry to investigate the documentation surrounding SCP-5545, the extensive loss of human life, and the general misconduct of staff in the site. Director Monroe was permitted to conduct his investigation. A full list of relevant documentation can be found below. Addendum 1 Official Inquiry Request and Response Official Inquiry Request Solicited by Director Jason Monroe, Head of Site-58 Issued November 18, 2019 Addressed to the Acting O5 Council and Ethics Committee I am submitting an official inquiry request to investigate and potentially revise the current containment procedures of SCP-5545. Its current acting head researcher, Dr. Gabriel Reed, has been in charge of the project for almost two decades, yet has updated the page only twice, the first time on September 8, 2003, and the second time on December 3, 2003. The file is severely lacking information and clearly requires some capacity of resources that doesn't make it a safe class anomaly, according to any of our standards, even the ones dating to 2003. Additionally, we have roughly no knowledge of SCP-5545-2. While it's clear that the anomaly for this is a danger to human life, it appears to have been completely dormant until it was discovered. It is likely more efficient for containment specialists to simply isolate the anomaly than attempt to actively contain it. If not, we should at least receive some form of update to the file or information about the anomaly as a whole. If it were any other anomaly, I'd probably ignore the file and continue my duties as director. However, the file does not state that there's any mimetic influence occurring, and the complete silence from Provisional Site 344-1 has left me to believe that something drastic has occurred without our knowledge. Considering the proximity of Site 58 to the anomaly, this would fall under my jurisdiction, as detailed under the Site Director Code of Ethics Rules. Considering my previous employment in Mobile Task Force 8 of 10, and my involvement in the containment of numerous Keter class anomalies, I would like to request to personally navigate to and investigate the circumstances surrounding SCP-5545. I have already assured that my work for the next six months can be done by other personnel, and that I will not be needed during this time. You can find appropriate paperwork attached to this document. O5 Council Proposal Summary Council Vote Summary Status Approved Addendum 2 Initial Exploration The following are private documents and notes recovered from Director Jason Monroe's notebook during his investigation of SCP-5545. November 20, 2019 I have arrived at the provisional site today. The trip wasn't as terrible as I expected it to be. Some hot chocolate in a helicopter over an arctic wasteland, while uncomfortable, was still the most soothing feeling I've had all month. Half a year of being a site director can seriously get on your nerves. Don't think I'll be offered any luxuries for a while, so it was nice while it lasted. I've come prepared with a few O5 approved provisions, such as a hostile meme detector and audio recorders. I've also got a concealed carry-on weapon which I don't plan on ever using. Might be useful anyways. The O5 refused to let me bring scramble gear, but it's understandable. The tech is still relatively new and experimental. Feels a lot like my days in 8 of 10. When I arrived at the provisional site, I was greeted by a middle-aged researcher, flashed him my credentials, and he quickly moved aside, but not before telling me SCP-5545-2 is contained in Site-344-2, in an almost depressive tone. Ran the audio through the hostile meme detector, I'll just abbreviate as HMD, and it turned up negative. Possibly getting paranoid, but it's better safe than sorry. My room is on the first subterranean floor of the complex, third door on the left side of the first hallway. It's small but cozy, a single bed and bath, two heaters, it's the Arctic after all a coffee machine and alarm clock. 
a few other minor bits of furniture here and there, but the room doesn't contain a lot. The light fixture above my head is illuminating the concrete walls of the room. Unfortunately for me, I arrived at night, meaning Dr. Reed was off-duty and probably asleep. Tomorrow will have to do. Until then, I've decided to write down my observations and bindings into a notebook. I'll likely do this every night, since typing this stuff on a phone is a pain in the ass. Besides, writing helps me think better. Apologies to whoever needs to transcribe this. Jason Monroe November 21, 2019 I decided to walk around a bit in the morning before everyone else woke up. The ventilation shafts in my room make this quiet whistling noise when night comes in. It's really annoying, so I'm going to try to fall asleep before they start. While on my walk, I notice something interesting. At the end of each hallway, there's a green sign saying that it's safe to cross. It's these small details that make containment possible in the Foundation, especially with odd adaptive anomalies, like 5545. Since Dash 1 appears indefinite, you use that to your advantage and put the signs at the end of the halls so the anomaly can't mimic it. Yet despite all the cleverness of people, somehow the site ended up compromised. One of the unfortunate risks of working for this place. I also noticed that there's cameras in practically every hallway here, but none in my room, nor the halls outside the dorms. I plan on using that to my advantage, but for now, I'll have to keep tabs on it. My meeting with Dr. Gabriel Reed was relatively lackluster. I entered his office at 9 a.m. and left at about 9.30. He was a good bit shorter than me, balding, and lacking any significant facial hair. The bags under his eyes told me he was barely sleep-deprived, or incredibly bored. From the way he spoke, I assumed both. He simply nodded at me as I came in and sat down, and we sat in silence for what felt like an hour, but was in reality closer to a minute. I started asking him questions, and he answered briefly and concisely. When I asked about 5545, he just pointed at a copy of the file. I questioned him about Dash 2 and got nothing except that it constituted a containment breach if I was informed. In other words, the conversation was infuriating, and I found out nothing. The meeting ended, and I returned to my dorms. Obviously, I ran the conversation through the HMD. People don't just sit there and answer questions vaguely, yet robotically. Hell, it's one of the telltale signs of some kind of emetic suppressant. But despite everything, the conversation returned no malicious memetic infection. I tried running it without any filter on detection, but only got regular, non-anomalous memes, standard with most conversations. In other words, whatever has made the site like this is either an incredibly powerful yet subtle memetic hazard or not a meme at all. It's around midday now, so I'll write another note tonight. Jason Monroe November 21, 2019 Remember when I said there were cameras in every hall? It's a little known fact, mainly because nobody is clear to know it, but every site contains a few locked and almost seamless panels that gives you complete access to the security system. Even the most antiquated systems are incredibly secure. If you don't have the proper credentials, you're bound to get in serious trouble. Thankfully, I do have them, and the terminal accepted me with no issues. I think the most notable thing was Conceptual Site 344 2 Soul Camera, which was a completely black screen, save for the phrase SCP 5545 2 is contained in Site 344 2. It produced a slight static noise whenever its audio was on, so I quickly muted it. I get that it's contained by association lock, but there's only one other person who can access the speed anyways, and it's Dr. Reed. There's literally no use for it. The second thing I noticed is something I've only seen once or twice in my time employed by the Foundation. Every employee, sitting at a cubicle, doing nothing but staring at their screens. All the screens displayed static, besides two which were simply powered off. Why does this place need 18 people at the minimum, if they do literally nothing all day? Despite these… oddities, my main reason for accessing the camera system is to ascertain Dr. Reed's schedule for holes. 
although everyone else's computer might be tuned to static. He seems to be actively using his, though I can't tell for what. During my probing, I found a small, but good enough gap where he went to make himself a drink and used the bathroom for fifteen minutes. He did it twice and I started watching, each for around the same time. If I can enter his office just after he leaves, I might be able to grab some information. In other news, I've encountered my first Dash 1 instance today. Almost missed it too, but my memory faintly reminded me that something was different. And it was only the endless abyss to my left that made me realize I was standing in front of. It blended in almost perfectly, and if I wasn't paying attention, I might have accidentally wandered down it. HMD is still turning up negative results for every bit of speech I can record, so it seems like a dead end. I'll write more tomorrow when I get some actual information. Jason Monroe Addendum 3 Investigation The following are private documents and notes recovered from Director Jason Monroe's notebook during his investigation to SCP-5545, during and after his espionage on November 22, 2019. November 22, 2019 I'm not going to lie, this makes absolutely no sense. I watched through the camera system for its break and found that it was 15 minutes each time, like I suspected. At 11.45, he left for the bathroom and I snuck into his office undetected. After just a few clicks, I managed to find SCP-5545 on its intranet database and attempted to open up the file only to discover that everything past the discovery logs were locked with O5 clearance. I wasn't aware there was anything past it, but I'm honestly not surprised. I decided to start looking through his files to see if I could find anything else that's useful. Interestingly enough, he's got relatively little on it, but enough information for me to gain some insight. Two things I found particularly interesting. First, this image. It's a bit blurry since I had to take the picture on my phone, then print it through the oldest system on the damn planet. But it clearly depicts a mobile task force entering a hall, presumably 5545-1. I don't recall the file ever saying something about a task force, but I'm willing to bet it is, once again, locked behind a passcode. Site Director clearance can get you far, but not all the way. The second thing was an Excel sheet, obviously rudimentary containing a list of every employee who's ever worked at the site. Around half of them are dead, either from suicide or anomaly influence, which I learned from the file. But one detail sticks out, a single redacted entry. The name, clearance, basic info, and even the cause of death have been entirely erased from the file. I don't know who our mystery man is, but I assume he might be the connecting link. I wanted to do a bit more digging, but I only had a few minutes left, so I tidied up and skiaddled. Had around 30 seconds to spare before Reed came back and continued working. Tomorrow, I plan on figuring out how to either hack or get past the security block. It's risky, but I was given unanimous O5 approval to investigate this anomaly, and by God I will. Why is there an O5 clearance notice anyways? Why did the O5 unanimously approve my expedition? It's been bothering me for a day or so now, but I'm starting to get suspicious. This makes no sense on every level. There's something fundamentally wrong here, and I plan on figuring out what. Jason Monroe It should be noted that the following page was torn and discarded after its creation. November 22, 2019 I had a dream. The same one since I joined Ada 10, but slightly different. I am standing in a lavish home I don't recognize. The walls are crimson, outlined with hellishly detailed golden adornments running up and down. There is a table in the center, made of glass surrounded by dozens of chairs of silver. It is cold in the room, and I am shivering, yet I am wrapped in a large, thick coat and I am not cold. At the end of the room, in the center, there is a fireplace. A few minutes pass and I'm walking through the room. There are statues along its sides, and they all either appear feminine or masculine, never in between. Their faces are the same. The man is angry, and the woman is afraid, and they are related. 
I don't know how I know this, but the thought is perfectly natural. I get to the end of the room and stand in front of the fire. It's quiet and warm. The only sound is the crackling of the fire and the chandelier hanging above the table, softly swinging back and forth, back and forth. I hated chandeliers as a kid, since I always felt they would just fall. I am nervous. I look back to above the table, but find the chandelier isn't swinging at all, but the noise is continuing. My gaze shifts from above the table to the fireplace at eye level. It's becoming infinitely tall, extending far beyond where I can see into the abyss above. But the swinging is not from the eternal depths, but rather from in front of me, from within the fireplace. The shape emerges, and I don't recognize it until it reached out and it's bored into my mind. There is the corpse of a woman, a small girl. She is hanging by a horrendously long thread, intertwining with the laces of the scarlet walls and extending upwards to a void of no ceiling. She grips the side of the fireplace and pulls herself out. She stares at me, watching. She is angry, and I don't know why, as though I am the source of all her rage and fury. She desperately wants to free herself from the torment, but can't leave the fireplace. I enter, and she rips my skin off, exposing my muzzle to the open flames. We burn forever together, suffering with no end. Today I dreamt that I blinked upon entering, and I'm in a hallway. That's what's new about the dream. I don't know what it means. Fuck it. Following this, Director Jason Monroe threw the paper away and returned to his bed. November 23, 2019 Had a weird dream last night. Decided to run my voice through the HMD, just to be sure, and it came out negative. Oh well. My main priority at the moment is to find out how the O5 are involved in this anomaly. But there's also the issue of figuring out what the hell is happening at the site. The plan of action is to infiltrate the O5 access section of the SCP-5545 file and find out what I need to know, and hopefully explain everything. I'm also still curious about the redacted entry and the MTF picture. I read through the file again, and I noticed that Site-344-2 is said to be conceptual, meaning that it's an idea space of some kind. I'm not sure what that entails or how the hell I could access it, but that means that Dash 2 is also contained in idea space. The containment procedures also say that it's kept under key via association lock, which I assume means that it's associated with a concept, the concept here being contained, and it becomes a concept. In reality, I have no idea. I have never heard of it, nor seen it used in another article. It could mean anything for all I'm aware. SCP-5545-2 seems to also cause suicide of some individuals, and directly kills others. I don't know what the criteria for each are. Judging by the amount of black boxes on the redacted report, it seems our mystery friend died differently from everyone else. Could be a red herring. The Foundation does that sometimes, but I doubt it is for this anomaly. I plan on infiltrating the office in two hours. Hopefully the new information will help me crack the case open. Jason Monroe November 24, 2019 Shit. I haven't written for almost a day, but I think it's safe to now. Just need to collect my thoughts. I waited for another opportunity to sneak into Reed's office. At about 11.45, he got up and walked out, giving me my chance to enter. I made sure to memorize the layout of everything on his monitor, so I could set it back to how it was before, without arousing suspicion. The goal was to find some way to access the entire file using only what was available on the computer. Considering Dr. Reed likely had access to it, and the device wasn't capable of connecting to the Foundation intranet. It must mean that the software already contained the clearance, and I just needed to activate it. Sure enough, after a few minutes of searching, I found them. The credentials were stored in a hidden file in some non-conspicuous folder. I recognized it as the late 05-9 signature code, mainly from its identifying features. It's complicated, 
but I have some experience. The key was clearly outdated and non-functional everywhere else, but since this was an isolated system, it worked like a charm. I punched in the numbers, and the file let me in. I… I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. The first thing I saw was the extended discovery log. It said that almost 30 MTF members were set in there, along with over 70 D-Class. Pardon my language, but what the fuck? Who kept sending these people into Dash 1 instances? Was it Reed? And if it weren't disturbing enough on its own right, I found a complete recollection of all my previously written notes, even the discarded ones, logged on a console that does not have access to the Foundation internet. I doubt it was read for a few reasons, mainly that the notes were carried on me at all times, and there's a non-keyed lock on my door, so I'm presuming that the O5 Council is somehow involved. I have no idea how, but someone is watching me. Then Reed walked in. The following is a transcript of the conversation between Director Jason Monroe and Director Gabriel Reed, and was not included in the note. Begin log. Dr. Reed Director Monroe? Sh shit Are you aware that entering my office without my permission is a breach of protocol? Are you aware that sending over 70 fucking D-Class into your pet anomaly is also a breach of protocol? Momentary silence. You've read the SCP-5545 file with O5 credentials. I am certain you saw the warning. I don't fucking care anymore. This site is under the influence of some kind of… of abnormality, and you're doing nothing to stop it. You're succumbing to it. I do not believe that is the case, Director. You have entered the site uninvited, and have violated its rules several times, and now have gone against O5 protocol. You may face termination charges. Director Monroe produced a concealed carry-on from his coat. Dr. Reed does not react. I am here under order from O5 to ensure this anomaly is contained properly. You have been inadequate. On the contrary, your orders were given to assist in containment, and everything has gone perfectly thus far. Director Monroe appears stunned. What? Return to your room, Director. You have everything you need. Director Monroe pauses, then slowly lowers his weapon. Dr. Reed moves from the doorway and allows the Director to leave. End log. Following this, Director Monroe returns to his room, not reconcealing his firearm. We had a… brief exchange. I lost my cool, and Reed said something that stuck with me. You have everything you need. What does that mean? Does he know about my thoughts? How did he get access to my notes? Is he watching me somehow? How are the O5 involved? Why did they send me specifically? Is 5545 the source of all this? What the fuck is going on? No one sent guards to detain me or kill me yet. I think, thus far, I'm in the clear. But I need to think. Jason Monroe I feel like I'm going insane. Do I even know? It's a conspiracy. I've been thinking through my options here, and all the clues I've gathered, and I've come to a few conclusions. For some reason, I haven't been detained or terminated yet, nor recalled from my duty. Along with Reed's statements and the unanimous O5 vote, I'm starting to come to the conclusion that perhaps I'm here for a reason besides investigating the anomaly, that I've been playing a role for some higher purpose that I've been a puppet on a string this entire time. The notes are leading me to believe that, somehow, they had access to it beforehand, from seventeen fucking years ago. How is that possible? How long have I been here? Repeated amnestic use on this scale would surely show some side effects in me. It couldn't have been a memory wipe. I can't seem to figure it out. Why am I needed here? I volunteered to come. It wasn't an O5 order. Did they expect me to? How? Mimetics? It doesn't add up. I'm missing the final piece of this goddamn puzzle, and I'm sick of playing the stupid charade of cat and mouse. I need to end this. 
I've come up with a hypothesis, but with no way of proving it. SCP-5545-2 is contained in Site-344-2. That's what I've been told around three or four times now. Site-344-2 is a conceptual space, but nonetheless exists. If there's a way to get conceptual Site-344-2, there's a way to find SCP-5545-2 and find out what the hell it is. It may constitute a containment breach, but I'm willing to risk it. I need to know. The part of my hypothesis I can't prove is that SCP-5545-1 is the entrance to conceptual Site-344-2. If I end up going into SCP-5545-1, and it will kill me, and I'm not supposed to be there, Dr. Reed will be forced to prevent me from going. If it won't kill me, then I won't be dead. Great. If I'm supposed to be there, then at least hope I'll get some fucking answers, whether it's fatal or not. If I come out alive and there isn't some sort of grand plan, and I'm just losing my goddamn mind, then I'll be terminated anyways for breaking O5 order. There's nothing left for me to lose. There's a Dash 1 instance directly across the hall from my dorm. I'll see you bastards on the other side. Addendum 4 Conclusion The following is a video log of Director Jason Monroe's expedition into SCP-5545-1 and Conceptual Site-344-2, recorded by a camera he stole from Site-344-1. Begin Log The sound of heavy breathing can be heard as Director Monroe walks through the SCP-5545-1 instance. The walls consist of white painted concrete worn by age and deterioration. There is no discernible end to the hallway, with the far end being entirely dark. Light fixtures overhead occasionally flicker, but do not turn off. The whirring of ventilation pipes is faintly audible. Monroe mutters momentarily about getting the camera to operate. Although the footage is slightly grainy, it is functional, and records in decent quality. He sweeps the camera in both directions revealing that no entrance or exit is visible from within this point in the anomaly. As Monroe continues to walk down the hall, the lights continue to flicker more sporadically, and the ventilation whirring continues to increase in pitch. Two minutes pass, and the flickering begins to quicken alarmingly. Monroe appears to panic, and begins to hyperventilate. He stops walking, and the camera turns towards his face briefly. All lights turn off. Three seconds pass in absolute darkness, followed by the SCP-5545-1 instance, quickly brightening. The hallway's appearance has changed entirely. Now it appears ornamental, with yellow painted walls, elaborate rugs lining the floor, and wooden decorations. Lamps are present in regular intervals on the ceiling. Similar to before, the instance appears to extend indefinitely. Director Monroe is heard choking back a sob and frantically scans the area. He appears to stutter and draw a sharp breath. The camera shakes slightly as he readjusts the device to face forwards. Director Monroe, I… I've seen this before. Director Monroe continues through the SCP-5545-1 instance at a normal pace, albeit with irregular breathing patterns and steps. The camera moves significantly more than it did prior. As Monroe continues, no noticeable changes are apparent in the hallway structure or behavior. Six minutes go by without incident. Monroe halts suddenly, readjusting the camera's focus and zoom. At the far end of the hall, there is a faint, flickering light visible, which Monroe briefly comments on quietly. He continues to walk, readjusting the camera occasionally to ensure the feed is clear. He persistently does so until approximately five meters from the exit. The camera stops moving, focusing on the light. The SCP-5545-1 instance leads into a long room, its details unclear due to the camera's quality. At the far end, the shape of the light changes wildly and is occasionally obscured by a moving figure. The camera feed begins to sharpen slowly. As the footage clears, the light is revealed to emanate from a fireplace. Director Monroe takes a deep breath audibly and enters Conceptual Site-344-2. 
The room is large and poorly lit, the only sources of light being the fireplace and candelabras lie in the walls. The ceiling is not in frame, and the walls seem to extend upwards indefinitely. Statues with indeterminate facial expressions are spaced regularly nearby, both male and female in appearance. Monroe makes various noises, suggesting immense emotional distress and anxiety. Upon reaching the fireplace, Monroe moves the camera upwards and centers it on the fire. A single white thread hangs in front of it, unmoving. Oh God! Oh God, no! Monroe does not move for approximately one minute. There is no discernible noise besides the crackling in the fireplace and the director's shallow breaths. The faint sound of creaking slowly becomes audible and increases in volume. Director Monroe becomes more distressed, and the string in front of the fireplace begins to swing. Monroe's breathing quickens significantly before he draws a deep breath and rapidly turns around. Director Monroe screams. The camera adjusts to reveal over 100 identical human cadavers, with the appearance of Monroe hanging from a multitude of white threads. All are dressed in different attire, ranging from farming garments to D-Class jumpsuits, as well as approximately 20 in Mobile Task Force tactical gear. All appear to slightly swing from the strings in unison. In the center of the room, at the ground level, the corpse of a young teenage girl is suspended by the strings. Her body is perfectly preserved, though does not show any signs of life. She is dressed in 18th century clothing. Unlike the cadavers hanging above her, she does not swing and is entirely motionless. I remember. I remember. Oh, please. Please, no. Director Monroe drops the camera and sobs uncontrollably. There is no reaction, but the cadavers do not cease moving. How much… how much longer will you do this? There is no response. The cadavers quickly rise out of frame, and a single string lowers itself in front of Director Monroe. The corpse of the girl does not move, but the length of the room slowly diminishes until it is roughly equivalent in length and width. SCP-5545-1 is visible behind the girl. I. I get it. You want me to make a choice. There is no response. If I leave here, if I leave the conceptual site, you'll follow me. You'll follow me outside, but I'll be free. Your hallways will spread all over the world, and thousands will be brought here in my place to die. There is no response. But, but if I die here, I'll be brought back again and again, with a different life each time killed over and over forever, but it will only be me to atone for what I did. There is no response. I'm sorry. There is no response. Silence elapses for three minutes. During this time, Director Monroe's breath becomes steadier, and he ceases crying. The Foundation knew. They needed me to come here. They needed me to keep you contained. And they needed me to make the right choice to keep you here, and to keep me from leaving through the hall. There is no response. That's why this happened, and why it'll happen again. Why everything needed to be set up this way. Why they had my notes from before. They knew exactly how the play would conclude, because they already read the script. There is no response. <laughs> Fuck it! Slowly, Monroe enters into the frame, and approaches the string. He carefully picks up the end of the thread in his palm, and it begins to coil around his hand. The lights in the SCP-5545-1 instance turn off, followed by each candelabra in succession. As the thread snakes through his clothing and around his skin, Monroe looks directly at the girl's corpse. How could I ever forget you, Emily? The ropes tighten, and Monroe spasms uncontrollably, his body collapsing to the floor. The fireplace extinguishes, leaving only darkness. End log. The camera was recovered and logged according to standard protocol. 2. Gabriel Reed at SCP Found Out Intra from S. Overseer 9 at OWCOM. Intra Subject Reference SCP 5545 Dr. Reed, I would like to address your concerns one at a time. 
First, everything in the mock file is technically correct. Site 344-1 is used as an information processing base when not containing SCP-5545. And 18 people are the minimum requirement for maintaining a site on average. SCP-5545-2 is also contained via association log, but not to the concept of being contained. Rather, it's associated to SCP-5545-4's death. The phrase SCP-5545-2 is contained in Site-344-2. It's specifically for Dash-4, and is not actually relevant to the anomaly standard containment. As long as Dash-1 and Dash-2 are contained, so is Dash-3, and since Dash-4 is necessary to contain Dash-2, it is contained as well. Second, no, you may not take an amnestic regimen. You have an assigned therapist, and your memory for prior cycles are necessary, in case of future deviations. Third, our next Dash-4 instance was found among a D-Class transfer, convicted for theft and assault. Considering how long the process takes for D-Class instances, your services will likely not be needed for at least six months. You will receive your extra pay over this duration. Fourth, I do not have the answers to your questions. We are still unable to determine the nature of SCP-5545-4's actions against SCP-5545-2 300 years ago, and won't be able to for the foreseeable future. We do not know why SCP-5545-1 are hallways specifically. The methods SCP-5545-2 uses to propagate its goals, or why SCP-5545-3 will result from SCP-5545-4's refusal. There are simply answers we cannot know. It is not our job to rescue a murderer from the consequences of his actions. Our refusal to deliver him to Conceptual Site 344-2 in 2005 results in an SCP-5545-3 manifesting, in order to force him to enter. We do not plan to risk thousands of deaths for nothing, and it costs us nothing to contain Dash-2 by simply complying with its demand. It's not our job to research, and it's not our job to interfere. It's our job to secure, to contain, and to protect. Nothing more, and nothing less. With regards, the desk of O5-9.